Welcome back to MMA On Demand. So usually there's a big bald guy standing right beside me and you're probably wondering where he is. Well, he is actually working on something new and exciting for this channel as we speak. But don't worry, we got something exciting for you today. We're gonna go over the top five best knockout artists of all time. Stay tuned. At number five, I have the heavy-handed Francis Ngannou. How could I leave Francis off this list? He currently holds the highest punching power ever measured by the UFC at 129,161 units. Pfft, whatever that means. The next best is held by kickboxing champion Tyrone Spong at 114,000 units. Anyway, he hits hard, and some crazy machine proves it, but we don't need that. Just watch his win over Alistair Overeem, which was knockout of the year in 2017. This fighter has obtained stardom at no heights any other MMA fighter has ever seen. At number four, Conor McGregor. Unlike Ngannou, Conor's knockout prowess comes from beautiful countering followed by precision punches. As many people know, he even tried his hand in professional boxing against arguably the greatest boxer of all time. Floyd Mayweather, and did pretty damn well. But MMA is a completely different animal that involves kicks, knees, elbows, and punches, as well as grappling. Yet Connor finds a way to keep it standing, bait you in, and finish you with his signature left. All right, now for my surprise choice on this list. People who watch UFC won't even know who this guy is. But if you only watch UFC, check out Bellator. And make sure you check out my number three choice, Michael Venom Page. For my number three selection, I went way off the board. This guy has not yet cemented a legacy, nor is he even a top 10 pound for pound fighter, yet. He is easily one of the most exciting fighters MMA has ever seen. Michael Page reminds me of a more dynamic Anderson Silva. The way he fights can downright piss you off if you let it, much like Anderson in his prime but Venom can back up his silly antics. One second he's acting drunk, and the next he's knocking guys out with flying knees or spinning roundhouses. He also possesses a nasty overhand right. He currently is 13-0 in MMA, but he's able to knock people out in other combat sports as well. He is 2-0 in pro boxing and 1-0 as a kickboxer all knockout finishes in those respective sports, by the way. Tito Ortiz is going to hate me for this choice, but I have to pay homage to a legend. At number two, former 205 kingpin, Chuck Liddell. Oh yeah, baby, the Iceman. One of the greatest MMA pioneers and one of the key fighters to put MMA on the map. Chuck Liddell was an absolute beast in his prime. And like any other MMA legend, he seemed unbeatable for a time running a seven fight win streak, including four title defenses. All wins by either TKO or knockout. I agree, there are now more impressive win and knockout streaks than the Iceman, but he was a star when MMA needed it most, and is surely one of the reasons MMA became mainstream and has become one of the fastest growing sports in the world. So unless you were living under a rock for nearly eight years, you were probably able to predict my number one choice. At number one, the spider, Anderson Silva. Honestly, who else would top this list? One of the greatest, if not the greatest MMA fighter of all time is also the greatest knockout artist and most potent striker MMA has ever seen. Anderson Silva could drive you nuts with his ring antics, just like Michael Page does now. But like Michael Page, he could back it up, and he did so on a 16-fight win streak and a whopping 10 title defenses. The most perplexing thing about Anderson was on paper, he had a lot of holes, like a lack of takedown defense. And oh my god, I would scream when he would constantly drop his hands and taunt his opponents. But it worked. Often he would bait opponents into charging in before dropping them with a beautifully timed punch, or punish them with some deadly knees. Just ask Chris Levin about that one. His reflexes and reaction time were off the charts, 
and he made his opponents pay using them. Unfortunately, his incredible reign came to an end when Chris Weidman finally exploited the taunting. It took long enough, but let's forget about that, and let's remember this instead. So because we are working on this new and exciting project, we will be taking a couple weeks off and we will be back on August the 30th. But until then, make sure you subscribe and like the video and we'll see you next time on the mats.